Sup y'all, and welcome to Global Interactions Part 4. In this video, we're going to be looking at the impact of the Protestant Reformation and ask this essential question. How did the Catholic Church lose its dominant position at the expense of rising nation states? To find the origin of this, we have to find a starting point. So let's go back in time to the Middle Ages when feudalism dominated Europe and most of the world for that matter. John Wycliffe, an English theology professor in the mid-14th century, is referred to as the Morning Star of the Reformation. Now, the Reformation was a major religious movement that didn't truly begin until around two centuries later. Wycliffe criticized the church's selling of indulgences, or pardons from sin, among other issues. He also helped translate the Bible from Latin into English. His followers were called Lollards, meaning mumblers, a derogatory nickname implying they were uneducated. They were persecuted and sometimes hung or burned to death, or as you see here, all the above. Jan Hus, who was influenced by Wycliffe, criticized the church from within Bohemia, which is now the Czech Republic. Unfortunately for him, in 1415, he was convicted of heresy and burned to death at the stake. For the time being, the church had managed to silence its dissidents. So why did these movements remain relatively local and fail to erupt into the regional and religious reforms that occurred more than a century later? Well, the velocity of transmission of ideas and culture throughout Europe can be ascribed to the invention of Gutenberg's movable type printing press. The uprisings caused by Wycliffe and Hoos could be contained because, at the time, information could be easily controlled and confined. The power of the written word to disseminate knowledge, enhance scientific research, spread political ideas, and fan the flames of religious discontent. The printing press ultimately enabled the Italian Renaissance to diffuse into the Northern Renaissance, which emphasized religion and reform. In fact, the first major book printed in Europe was the Gutenberg Bible. A copy is shown here in the lower right. Eventually, the Bible became widely available in multiple translations. This was a factor often attributed to the rise and spread of the Protestant Reformation. Now, the Protestant Reformation is very significant because it weakened the power of the Catholic Church and increase the power of nation-states, which ultimately leads us to the world we have today. Now, a very pertinent question is why did this take place in Germany? To answer that question, we'll look at geography. Uh, yeah! To start off, we'll look at the theme of place. Now, Germany in the 1500s was actually part of the Holy Roman Empire, which had existed since the 900s. The Holy Roman Empire contained the German Confederation that you see right along here. This was a grouping of loosely held states, with each state maintaining a degree of sovereignty within its borders. So Germany at that time was what we call a multi-state nation. Now without the assistance of technology, a local uprising would remain just that, local. So the next theme is movement and the diffusion of ideas through Gutenberg's printing press. And that brings us to another theme, region. Now, Northern Europe was strongly influenced by the Northern Renaissance, obviously, as well as its emphasis on reform and religion. Now, the theme of location also helped explain why this event happened where and when it did. Because the Holy Roman Empire was located relatively distant from the direct influence of the Vatican and Rome, this relates to the concept of distance decay, that distance actually separates. The church had more control in lands closer to its home base and less control in lands further away. With regard to human environmental interaction, the northern part of the Holy Roman Empire sat across the European plain with largely flat terrain. The German lands have always had a central location in Europe, with long established rivals to its east and west, and Russia and France, respectively. Germany has always been a crossroads and one of the most fought over regions in the world. Therefore, it was challenging to maintain under a single political unit. Now, moving southward, the territory varies between hills, river valleys, and mountain ranges. This terrain added to political and cultural division. Coupled with the feudal past of Europe, the Holy Roman Empire, consisting of over 300 states, evolved as a logical adaptation to the terrain and region. Now, in any good story, you need a protagonist. Enter Martin Luther, who could be seen as the unwitting revolutionary, because he did not intend to begin one of the most radically momentous time periods in European history. He merely intended to reform some Catholic practices that were not supported by his readings of the Bible. The antagonist of this story was Johann Tetzel, a Catholic priest who was selling indulgences, or pardons for sin. 
Luther was appalled by this. In 1517, he famously tacked 95 theses to the Wittenberg Church. With no billboards and newspapers at the time, if you wanted to send a message, you did so by advertising at the center of town, which was the church. This was the beginning of his formal protest against some practices of the church. He stated that faith was key to salvation, not actions, and that truth was found only in the Bible, not in the teachings of the Catholic Church. Using the printing press, Luther managed to spread his ideas and influence people not only in the Holy Roman Empire, but throughout Europe as well. This transformed a regional protest into a widespread political revolution. As rebellions began to erupt in 1521, Emperor Charles V called upon Luther to repudiate his views at the Diet of Worms. Luther was denounced as a heretic and was banished, but he found an ally in one of the German princes and hid in Saxony. It was there that he and others translated and printed the Bible into German from originally in Latin. Concurrently, many German nobles supported the Protestant Reformation, seeing an opportunity to seize land and power at the expense of the church. By the mid-1500s, violence erupted in a Catholic-led peasant revolt, mostly against German Protestant nobles. Luther, however, did not support this and even condemned the growing violence. In this drawing, you see one of the leaders of the peasant revolt being burned alive at the stake. Well, isn't that special? 